when i started this section of the discourses on the bhagavad gita i pointed out to you the quotation from the yaksha gita which is part of the mahabharat where the yaksha asks yudhishthir what is the most amazing thing in the world and yudhishthir says ahani ahani bhutani gachante yamalayam shesh stavaram ichanti kim ashcharya mataparam the most amazing thing in the world is that we are surrounded by death and yet each of us thinks we are going to live forever and because of this most amazing thing i want to ask all of you one question have you made your will if you haven't made your will it means you are also victim of this illusion the illusion that you are going to remain in this body forever and it's not just your will which decides which is about deciding how to keep your or divide how to divide your estate or your how to divide your assets but there are also other means that you would like to leave behind as your legacy in the old days video used to be difficult but now everyone has a smartphone and is able to record video so how about a video will sharing your values and how you'd like to be remembered and giving a message to each of your family members and loved ones what you can call your emotional will your relationship will also how about a living will a living will is an advanced health directive an advanced health directive saying how you would like to be treated if you cannot make your decisions on how health care will be administered to you this is very important because now medical technology has so advanced that long beyond time of your natural death your life can be stretched prolonged and your body can be tortured the finances of the family can be drained and your family can be also tortured emotionally simply because of technological advance of medical science so would you like to be if your disease is considered to be irreversible would you like a do not resuscitation directive would you like to be tube fed would you like to be placed in a respirator just to keep you alive even though you may be close to death or about to leave the body so this is called a living will i'm pretty sure most of you haven't done all this because of course most of us we imagine we are not going to die so why should we make a will but the very least you can gain from these sessions is that you better make a will of both the distribution of your assets how you would like your health care to be administered to you when you are in an irreversible state heading towards death and also you should reflect on whether you would like to leave a message on video for your family and loved ones having said this i would like to remind you of what we did in the last session and what we did in the last session was that 
we don't want to come back change of bodies means moving from one body to the next and depending upon the actions and behavior in this life we will get the next body we can choose our actions and the way we live our life chooses the kind of body we get asurim yoni maapanam mudho janmani janmani those who lived godless lives fools birth after birth they seek similar wombs as they take the downward spiral of devolution but for those who desire that this life should be the last that they are convinced that this world is dukhalayam ashashvatam anityam sukham lokam how should they leave the body i did the traditional method some time back and i also explained to you that if you can absorb yourself in god with love and devotion in forgetfulness of the world and all your attachments in this world with full detachment completely absorbed in god remembering god forgetting self if you leave the body calling out to the lord you go back to him but the question is some people have a wrong idea somebody told me that hey i don't need to hear your lecture i already know that at the time of death all i have to do is to call out god's name and if i call out god's name then immediately i go back to god and when i asked him where did you hear this he says isn't that the story of ajamil so i think i need to tell you the story of ajamil so that you are not under any delusion of what happened ajamil was a saintly brahmana who lived in a small kingdom he looked after his parents his wife his children and he had respect in the neighborhood he had many people who called him who were his yajmans would call him for performing religious ceremonies on a regular basis and he made a living one day while ajamil was traveling in a deserted part of the road he saw a prostitute having sex with one of her customers and from behind a bush he observed this whole episode and it so polluted his mind and awakened vasanas that were there deep within him that he followed this woman set up a relationship with this woman started spending his money on this woman and eventually moved in with this woman with whom he had several children the youngest of these children was a boy who by the grace of god was called narayan and this little boy running around in the home was the center of ajamil's life so ajamil was old by now but his son narayan was a source of complete fascination for him and he was constantly calling out to his son 
Narayan, come here. Narayan, hug me. Narayan, give me a kiss. Narayan, give me this. Narayan, do this for me. And all the time he was calling out Narayan, 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 Narayan. And in this life, having committed so many sins, abandoned his wife and children, his aged parents, having cohabited with this prostitute, living with her, he acquired her nature and behavior. Ajamil forgot all about death. can be sure he never made a will. And Ajamil, while he forgot about death, death did not forget about him. Death never forgets about you. And when his moment came to leave this body, it was his moment of death because of the sinful life that he had lived, the Bhagavad Puran describes that Yamaraj, the God of Justice, sent to retrieve the soul of and the subtle body of Yamaraj is rightful prey, Ajamil. He sent his messengers known as the Yamaduts. And when the Yamaduts came to him, these Yamaduts, ghoulish looking, fearsome visage, frightening face Ajamil realized his moment had come and surrounded by these horrific individuals who had come to retrieve him and send him to hell Ajamil called out for his youngest son because he had his youngest son had filled his mind and his heart all his life and he called out, Narayan, Narayan, Narayan. When Jamil called out, Narayan, although he intended to call his son, immediately there appeared the messengers of God. The Bhagavad describes the Vishnu Dutas and the Vishnu Dutas arrested and prevented the Yamadutas from dragging Ajamil to hell. And they declared the law of God that one who calls out the law of God, one who calls out the name of God, whether he calls that name of God by accident, offensively, jokingly, carelessly, without intending to call God, but call somebody else, once he recites the name of God, he is protected from going to hell. Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita, it is described, Neha Bikramo Nashosti Pratyavahena Vidyate Svalpam Apiasya Dharmasya Trayato Mahato Bhayat On this path, there is no loss 
and one is protected from the greatest fear, says the Bhagavad Gita, says Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Now, what is the greatest fear? The greatest fear is going to hell, meeting the Yamaduts and Yamaraj, and going to unimaginable torture in the interval between two lives. Similarly, Adi Shankaracharya, in the Mohamudgara Stotra, also known as the Bhajagovindam, states, Bhagavad Gita Kinchita Dita Ganga Jallava Kanika Pita Sakridapi Murari Samarcha Kriyate Tasya Yamena Na Charcha Bhajagovindam Bhajagovindam Govindam Bhajamudamate if you have heard Bhagavad Gita even a little bit, Bhagavad Gita Kinchita Dita, Ganga Jallava Kanika Pita, if you have taken even a drop of Ganges water with love and with devotion and surrender, Sakridapi Murari Samarcha, if even once in your life you have called out to God, Murari, Krishna, and you have said, hey, Krishna, I am yours. Even once in your life, if you've done that. He says, kriyate tasya yamena na charcha. Doesn't, you do not have to face Yamaraj and the tortures of hell as a consequence. Therefore, he says, worship Govinda, worship Govinda, worship Govinda, you fool. And when he reveals this, the Yama Vishnaduts, he reveal this. The Yamaduts are banished. And Ajamil is saved from going to hell. But of course, he is not saved from going to hell to the extent that he goes back to God. This is a delusion. Is only saved from going to hell. Neha bikramo nashosti pratyavayana vidyate svalpam apiyasya dharmasya trayato mahato bhayat. He is saved from the greatest fear. Trayato mahato bhayat. And also, kriyate tasya yamena na charcha. He has no charcha, he has no argument, he has no discussion. With Yamaraj, he doesn't meet him. So he's saved from going to hell. But he doesn't go to God. That is very clear. He gets a second chance. And having a second chance, Ajamil then leaves behind that child Narayan, he leaves behind the prostitute he is cohabiting with. He leaves behind his sinful lifestyle. He goes into a hut not far from a Vishnu temple. And going there, he constantly chants the name of God from sunrise to sunset. From sunrise to sunset, he chants the name of God. And after 12 long years of chanting the name of God from sunrise to sunset, purifying himself and cleansing his mind, finally, when death comes, a Jamil Remembering God, forgetting himself in complete forgetfulness of the world and himself and all the sins that he has left behind him. In this absorption in God, he goes back to God. So when I first heard this story of Ajamil, I thought to myself, 
that God has placed me in a very special position. Because at that time I was also overseeing the emergency ward in a major hospital, teaching hospital in Bombay. And I thought that as a doctor in the emergency room, I am not a stranger to death. Every emergency day, we come across patients whom, by the grace of God, acting as an instrument, we rescue from the jaws of death. And not only do we rescue them from the jaws of death, we help them to become whole and recover fully. But unfortunately, regrettably, unavoidably, we do come across occasional cases who are so ill when they come into the hospital emergency room that despite the best efforts of the best doctors providing the best treatment to the patient, the patient is taken by death. So I thought to myself that here I am studying the Bhagavad Gita, speaking on death, and yet God has given me this option that whenever there is a patient who is going to die regardless of best efforts then before he dies i may not be able to help him to reunite with god completely because after all, that will require a lifetime of absorption in God and surrender to him. But at the very least, if I can help him to call out the name of God and call out the name of God according to his faith, not my faith. So if I can help him to call out the name of God according to his faith, by reminding him of God, I will at least save him from hell. So with this resolve in my mind, I attended the emergency room every time I was there to oversee it. And we aggressively treated all patients who came in and again, by God's grace, we happened to save all of them. In fact, I recall that in those emergency days, not a single patient actually died. Of course, you should know the prayer of every surgeon. And the prayer of every surgeon to God is that, oh God, if there is a patient who is going to die anyway, regardless of whatever is done for him, please God, send, don't send him to me, send him to some other surgeon. But here, I had a different intent. My intent was, That, oh God, if there is a patient who is going to die anyway, regardless of what is done to him, send him to my emergency room when I am in charge, so that while trying to rescue him, I can help him to call out the name of God according to his faith and save him from hell.
well at least in those days by god's grace no one passed away no one died no one changed his body in the emergency ward i looked after after that resolve was made but one day i met my friend who was a physician and he came to my house and he said that he has a patient who is in the intensive care unit of one of the most posh hospitals five star hospitals in bombay city and that patient is about to die and he was very depressed so he said please do something so that i am not so depressed see if anything can be done for my patient so i went with him to this five star hospital we went to the intensive care room and here was this lady who had come from hong kong in those days before the regulator had turned up the heat india had become an organ bazaar and at that time patients were coming to india to get organs transplanted which they would purchase from indigent people who were suffering extreme poverty and would pay them for the organs so this lady had come from hong kong to pay somebody to transplant their kidney into her but having come to india to buy a kidney things turned from bad to worse initially they tried a peritoneal dialysis to prepare her for surgery but the fluid that was put into the abdomen to cleanse out and wash out her blood would not come out of the abdominal cavity and it accumulated there and she became water logged and indeed because of the excess blood volume which was not being excreted she had congestive cardiac failure so her heart was failing her lung was failing and she had difficulty breathing so having seen all her medical parameters and examining her i told my friend that there is definitely little doubt that this unfortunate lady is close to death and forget about having a kidney transplant done she is about to be transplanted from her physical body she is due for a change of bodies which could occur any time so at that time he said what should we do i said the only thing i can suggest now is that you should encourage her to at least call out the name of god once he looked at me with shock he saying is this a medical opinion i said no this is not a medical opinion this is an opinion i am giving not as a surgeon or as a doctor but as a student of the bhagavad gita so he says you will embarrass me in this hospital i said no it's very simple close the cabin in which she was in the icu pull the curtains ask went up to the ear of the patient and i asked the patient in her mother tongue to call out the name of god someone had put a picture of krishna on the table next to her bed and i told her 
भगवान का नाम लो जी कृष्ण का नाम लो and that lady looked at me and she said what what kya kya so then this time i thought that you know when a patient is about to leave the body when the heart is failing the lung is failing all the blood parameters have gone haywire how can such a patient even hear what we are saying so i went to his ear and i shouted in her ear with the loudest voice that i could summon bhagwan ka naam lo ji krishna bhagwan ka naam lo and this lady looked at me and she said what kya so then i thought maybe she is deaf in this ear so i crossed over onto the other side of the bed and again i repeated in her ear telling her to call out the name of god and again she looked at me as if she couldn't understand and she said what what so i thought her consciousness is also disrupted she can't hear anything she can't think anything she is obviously about to slip into coma and i told my friend i think we should leave so we went to the door of the cabin unlatched it and we were about to exit from the door when that lady called out to my doctor friend called him by his first name called him by the mother tongue they both spoke and she said call my daughter and she then gave the telephone number of her daughter tell her i am in bed so and so in the icu and tell her to come and see me now and she repeated this three times and that time i understood that she can't hear what i'm saying when i'm telling her to chant the name of god but because her life has been centered around her daughter her mind is clear enough and focused enough to think of her daughter remember her phone number and send a message that she should come to the hospital bed where she is and if nothing else that convinced me that indeed the truth is that we can't remember god if we haven't used our life to be absorbed in him if you have been absorbed in your son you will remember your son if you have been absorbed in your daughter you will remember your daughter if you have been absorbed in your grandchild you will remember your grandchild but you cannot remember god this was the message i got from my real life experience some time later i was working in another major hospital in the cancer surgery department and when i was working in the cancer surgery department there was a lady who was suffering from cervical cancer which was advanced she had undergone mm-hmm. surgery the cancer had mm-hmm. recurred she had undergone several cycles of chemotherapy mm-hmm. and it was clear that she was on the road to changing her body so one day she spoke to me and she said doctor i hear that you also give lectures on bhagavad gita 
one of the nurses has told me. So I said, yes, I do. So she said, then doctor, tell me what I should do because I know that I am going to die now. I said, yes, you are due for a change of bodies. She said, tell me what I should do now. How should I act? How should I behave? And so I told her that this is not the right place for me to tell you and you are due for discharge today. But I knew where she stayed from her papers. And I said, not far from where you are staying, I am conducting these classes on the essence of the Bhagavad Gita, where I also speak on facing death. So please come, I will arrange for a cot at the back of the hall so that you can lie down and you can hear it firsthand. But the next day when I began these classes there, I found that she was not there, but her husband had come. And the husband sat with the notepad and he listed and noted everything that I was saying. And all these lectures that you're hearing now, including the one that you are hearing today, were heard by him, notes were taken, and every day he would go back and he would share these, whatever he remembered of this session and whatever notes he had, he shared it with his wife. Some three months later, I was giving these lectures again. <clears throat> and at that time, his, he came to me and he said, Doctor, tell me, where is my wife now? I said, what do you mean? He said, she is no longer in her body. She has passed away. I want to know where she is now. So I said, what do you mean by you want to know where she is now? You just worry where you are going. <clears throat> so he says, no, I want to know where she is now because she did every single thing that you said in your lectures. I said, what did she do? And he explained to me. He said, a time came when she went back that she immediately called her sister and our family gathered around her. And she began to chant the name of God. According to her, she was chanting the name of, according to her faith, she was chanting the name of Mahavir. And we sat around her and we chanted continuously by taking turns of four, four hours each. And indeed, a time came when she was not able to take food or water because the cancer had involved her intestines. And we knew the end was near. And this time we continued the chanting around her and she continued chanting also through the night, 24 hours at a time. After five days, her sister came running to me and said, come, come, she's gone. So I ran to my wife who was lying on the bed and I called out her name. And my wife opened her eyes and she said, my dear husband, why did you call me? With my eyes closed, in complete forgetfulness of you, my child, my sister, all my relatives around me, only remembering God, in full forgetfulness of self, I was chanting God's name and I was leaving my body 
and I came all the way up to here. And then I heard you calling me and therefore I came back. So let me go now. I am going to God. He said, then we sat around her and she chanted God's name. We chanted God's name. And finally, she left her body. So she's done everything you said. Now tell me, where is she? I said, I can only tell you what Bhagavad Gita says. It says, Ante kale chamam eva smaran muktva kalevaram ya prati samad bhavam nasti atra samshaya. That if you remember me at the time of death, then without fail, you will come to me. So I said, that's all that I can tell you, that she is with God. So I'm giving you these lectures, not just because they are words from ancient scriptures or ancient books, not just because they are the experience of so many saints before us, but I am sharing this with you because this is my living experience. I don't know if you are convinced by what I am saying, but I can tell you that I am convinced. That if at the moment of changing bodies, we are able to remember God in forgetfulness of self, we will go to him. And if we are absorbed in other things in the world, then at the time of death, we cannot remember him. We will only remember the person whom, around whom we have centered our life. So you heard what Bhagavad Gita says. You heard my experience. Now you decide. Do you want to change your body? Remembering the people around you? who are dear to you in this world? Or do you want to leave this body remembering God and calling out to him and reuniting with him? That choice is yours. I'll conclude this session now. We still have 15 minutes for questions and answers. Right. Um... Uh, good morning, Dr. Shantanu. Welcome um, all, all of you to the session. And um, uh, Dr. Shantanu, uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, in, in the beginning of the session, you spoke about an emotional will. And while uh, you did say that, you know, it's a good idea to make like a video uh, message for your family members, no matter at what age you are, and also, you know, financial aspects, emotionally, how does really one go about making a will even long, long before their time has come? I think it's important to state to your close, near and dear ones, the values in your life which you held dear and which you have lived for. And you should speak individually to each person and to each person according to the relationship you have you should share with them what you hope and pray for them and how you hope they will remember you. Right. I have a message question here hmm. from Purba hmm. that is living will legal in our country. Euthanasia is not, she says. Actually, the Supreme Court has given a judgment on and enunciated specifically what is passive euthanasia. Does not permit active euthanasia, but permits passive euthanasia. And a living will is now legal in this country. It needs to be signed by a judicial magistrate first class and when it is being implemented, it needs to be sanctioned by the 
medical board put together by the hospital you are in with the permission of the local collector you want i can send details legal details on this but your lawyer should be able to do it for you right uh thank you dr shantanu dr shantanu you know we all heard the story about ajamil and uh, how he lived a life relatively of sin and still managed to uh, you know go to god um uh, you know a lot of hindu names a lot of uh, parents do name their children after the names of god ram lakshman uh, krishna and things like that so um, my actual question is something like can naming your child or anyone for that matter in the name of god while your heart is not pure is it enough to because you will be obviously calling out the names many times in a day but your heart needs to be pure as well right just yes, to go back to god your heart needs to be pure even ajamil didn't go back to god by calling out his son's name by calling out narayan he didn't go back to god he was only spared from going to hell hmm. so i told you this both from the bhagavad gita perspective from the bhajagovindam mo mudgara perspective that it saves you from going to hell it does not make you go back to god right. for that you require greater efforts examples of which i have discussed in my lecture right uh thank you uh, dr shantu we have a question uh, how can i remove illusion will it be removed by chanting maha mantra someone is asking us that yes illusion is the illusion that i am what i think i am we all have an illusion of self we all have an illusion of who i am that i am so and so that i am a man or i am a woman this is my name i am born in this family so we have all these upadhis we have all these labels but actually by calling out the name of god continuously by constantly offering all our actions all our duties to god in a spirit of sacrifice and devotion we become free from all these labels we become free from the illusion of self we begin to realize that we are nobody is doing nothing and that it is god who acts through prakriti and does everything thank you i think uh, we have uh, time to take uh, one last question uh, uh, dr shantanu talking about selflessness and being invested in god while at the same time you know you obviously have to work you have to get a job you need to acquire money to live this life till you are alive actually so how can one think about uh, you know how can be one completely be invested in god while at the same time also think about oneself okay you know i need to work i need to gather money can having thoughts like these work in uh, you know tandem with the fact that you need to be invested in god also yat karoshi yadashnasi yajjhosi dadasi yat yat tapasyasi kauntya tat kurusham tadarpanam whatever you do whatever you eat whatever you offer whatever you give away whatever charities whatever austerities you perform everything god says do it for me he actually says chetasa sarva karmani mai sanyasya matpara buddhi yoga mupashrita machitta satatam bhava machitta sarva durgani mat prasada tarishyasi atho chetva mahankaran na shroshasi vinankshasi always think of me do everything for me with your mind intelligence everything surrendered unto me by my grace you will cross over all obstacles in life but if you think that you are doing it everything is finished so continue to do everything that you are supposed to do with determination and but do it for god and all the things that are your due whatever is your prarabdha will come to pass 
संतुष्ट सततम योगी यथात्मा दृढ़ निश्चय मई अर्पिता मनोबुद्धि यो मद भक्त समय प्रिय Be content within, silent within, but furiously active without. With your mind and intelligence surrendered unto God, you will be a true devotee of Krishna. So do everything. Only do it for God. So do whatever, whatever, is, whatever is necessary, keep doing it. So do everything, do it for God. On that note, uh, we will conclude today's session. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shantanu. And um, as uh, you know, our audience knows by now, Dr. Shantanu answers all questions offline as well. So if you've not been able to, you know, tune in to the live session, you can watch it as a video in the, you know, Facebook page of Speaking Tree and Dr. Nagakati will answer all your questions in the comment section also. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shantanu. We look forward to having you next week. And Hari Om, Jai Shri Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.